How are all of you lovely people doing today? My name is John, and welcome to another beautiful episode of the Zombie Storyline Q&A. This is a series where I take your questions about the zombie storyline and I answer them, whether it's a big, a small, or a simple question, I'm always happy to take them on. So, you can either leave your questions down below, or you can tweet me at JohnnyJ25. Without further ado, let's get rocking and rolling with the episode. We're going to kick off today's episode with a question from Kasim, who asks, Is the bald guy in the first strike poster? Dr. Monty. He's referring to this poster right here. This poster came out just a little over five years ago, leading up to the release of Ascension. And you'll notice our characters. We have Tank, we have Nikolai, we have Takio, and and then we, we, have, we have a bald man? Who is this bald man? There's no bald man in the story. Well, a number of us assume, myself included, that this was Richtofen, and maybe the artist had made a mistake when designing the poster, or maybe there's just something we don't understand yet. However, Mr. Ruffawaffles had an interview with the one, the only, Mr. Blundy B, and he asked him, is the person in the first strike poster Richtofen? And he said, no, that is not Richtofen, which made a lot of us in the community go, whoa, hold up. We start scratching our heads to asking, then who is this man? And what is he doing with the rest of the crew? Because who else could be with our crew other than Richtof? It doesn't make sense. If we're going to answer this question of who this person is and if he is Dr. Monty, we need to look at our candidates. A lot of people, and a way more people than really should have suggested this, suggested that the bald man is actually the new antagonist in Infinite, Infinite Warfare. This bald man right here that we see in the trailers. I will concede there are a lot of similarities between these two characters. However, the likelihood that Treyarch put a character from a game that hasn't even been conceived yet into one of their posters, or that Infinite Warfare decided to base their villain off a mysterious man in a poster from a DLC that they didn't even create, sounds preposterous. There is no reason whatsoever, other than maybe some slight per similarities, that these would be the same person. It just sounds silly. Now, some people have suggested this man is Dr. Maxis. This is our only image of Dr. Maxis, and I suppose his appearance could vary from universe to universe. It isn't too impossible to say that Dr. Maxis is the one in the poster, but I would throw this in the more unlikely category. Now, what if it was somebody who worked at the Ascension facility, a member of the Ascension group? We do have some possible members. If you actually go and play the campaign, you are given some pictures of some members within the Ascension group. One of the characters who I'll note looks somewhat similar to this person, mainly because he's bald, would be Dr. Stefan Fedorov. He could be the person, but we don't really know much about this guy anyway. We also have another character who is also bald, Major General Dracovich, and they could both be this bald man. It just wouldn't really make sense why these characters who we don't really know much about, who don't really have much influence in the zombie storyline, would be standing next to our other characters. Maybe it's Dr. Gersh, or maybe it's Yuri. They are also members of the Ascension group. They worked on Project Thunder. They helped create the Thunder Gun. Maybe that's why they're in that poster holding the Thunder Gun. That would make more sense why they would be in the Ascension poster, but it is still, of course, begs the question, why are they with our characters, and which one is it? There's also one more explanation I'd like to throw out there. There is this image, or this concept art for Ascension that was once accidentally leaked on iTunes. You'll notice a man in the background carrying a gun who is bald, he kind of looks like our character in the Ascension poster, but of course, once again, we don't really know. We don't know this man at all. I can't tell you a thing about him other than him being in some leaked concept art, and this is clearly the Ascension facility before it was overrun. To conclude, it's really hard to nail down who this man is. I don't think he is Dr. Monty. This is because Dr. Monty is a relatively new character within the zombie storyline. I believe that Jason Blundell created this character maybe two or three years ago. I would say around the time that he had created Origins is the latest this character could have been conceived. I don't think they conceived the idea for Dr. Monty when they were creating Ascension, and it wouldn't make sense for them to include him into the Ascension poster. I will say it was foolish of us to assume this character was Richtofen. We know for a fact Blundell confirmed it's not Richtofen, but we can just look at the character and say that's not Richtofen. 
Richtofen on the map Ascension is wearing a space suit for some odd reason. Doesn't look like the suit of this character. Richtofen in previous maps has his Nazi uniform on, which also doesn't look like this character. Richtofen of course has a full head of hair and is often seen wearing his iconic uniform hat. This character is bald. Clearly not Richtofen. But it also didn't seem too crazy for us to suggest that maybe the artist just made a mistake because it's strange that a different character is with our three other characters. I'm not interested in who this man is. I'm more interested in why this man is standing next to our characters and why Richtofen isn't in the picture. That's what's so fascinating to me. I don't know if this will necessarily lead to some big revelation. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of meaning behind Richtofen not being in this poster. All I really know is that it doesn't make sense and it challenges our current understanding of our character dynamics and relationships within the game because who is this man and why is he with a group he does not belong in? We're now going to take a question from Autopilot001 who asks, John, what's going on with the rest of the world? Are the zombies spreading or is it just in the maps? This is a good question because sometimes I think we fail to imagine the zombie world in a much more complex sense. We get caught in our own bubble. We get chased by these zombies for hours on end and we imagine that the rest of the world is like this. And while that was the case in Black Ops 2, that isn't necessarily the case in Black Ops 3. Treyarch has done a good job of demonstrating this through many of the ciphers that they left within their maps. For example, when solved, this cipher reads as follows. Comrade, I hope these schematics reach you in time so our scientists can make use of them. For I know the Western Front is on the brink of collapse. These schematics I've stolen from Group 935 will enable us to construct our own wonder weapons, which will help us turn the tide of the war and give us victory over the German pigs. I fear, however, I will not live to see this. V. This is a Russian scientist who is defecting Nazi Germany, and he is going back to Russia with schematics that he's stolen from Group 935. Look at his priorities. He's talking about the war. He stole these schematics to help win the war. He mentions the Western Front is on the brink of collapse. He discusses victory over the German pigs. He's not talking about zombies. He's not talking about an infection. He's not talking about curing the world of a plague. He's talking about winning the war. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that while we're playing through Black Ops 3, World War II is happening. There are wars on many fronts right now. There's one on the Eastern Front, there's one on the Western Front, there's a, there's a war in the Pacific. A lot of things are going on right now. This is an incredibly complicated time that we're playing through. And it's not as simple as Black Ops 2 where the world has fallen into anarchy and there are just zombies running rampant and maybe some cults have formed. There are still these political bodies and there are still many research groups working with Element 115 to build weapons for the sake of the war. That's what's going on. The zombies, I believe, are a more isolated incident. They often happen within research facilities. These research facilities are working with Element 115, which has the power to reanimate dead bodies. And the zombies sprout up and take over the facility. Now, they're probably sort of spreading out to the surrounding areas, but they're not going too far. You'll notice that the town surrounding their Eisendrach isn't on fire. It seems like it's still a quaint village despite the zombies having taken over the research facility. They seem to stay within their general area. And the zombies, of course, on Zetsubonoshima are stranded on the island. Overall, I would say the rest of the world is just at war. But it's a different type of war than you and I are used to imagining. This is a war in which people have been able to create super powerful weapons. A war in which dragons are on the battlefield. A world in which there are super soldiers. This is like World War II on steroids. And this, to many characters within the game, is their focal point, not the zombies. Our characters care about the zombies because we're trying to stop the apocalypse, but the rest of the characters are just trying to win the war. We're going to end today's episode with a question from Khaled3-16 who asks, What is Argatha and the Aether? I hope I spelled that right. You were close, it's E after A, although good enough. Argatha is a much easier concept to explain than the Aether, so we'll begin with that. Some people believe that the Earth is hollow, and within the hollow Earth is another realm known as Argatha. Argatha is a much more mystical and magical place. It's the home of the Vril, it's almost like a paradise, and this is where the Vril, a very peaceful, highly advanced alien race, live. 
The Vril of the Creator is what we know as Vril Energy. For all intents and purposes, it's an infinite power source, and this is very attractive to people, and for many reasons, they've wanted to hunt for the Vril and discover their many secrets that lay below the Earth. And many of the characters within the zombie storyline do this. For example, Gary and Brock discover Shangri-La, which is believed to be a gateway to Argatha. We also know that the crazy place is a gateway to Argatha. Many characters are fascinated with Argatha. For example, Dr. Maxis. They believe that if they can discover the Vril, if they can find Argatha, they will find the answers to element 115. They will know the knowledge that the Vril have once discovered and then lost to humanity. It's very interesting to the characters, and there's a lot to be gained by finding Argatha, which is why many characters are hunting for it. As for the Aether, this is a lot more complicated. The Aether doesn't exist in the physical sense. It's much more of a spiritual realm. It, in many ways, is a thing. A thing that doesn't physically exist, but exists nonetheless, yet permeates the entire world. It's everywhere. If you can imagine it like the Force from Star Wars, it's just there. And some people are more attuned to the Aether than others. Some people are actually ethereal beings. For example, we believe Dr. Maxis has existed in the Aether at some point in time. We believe that when you are in the MPD Pyramid, you have a strong connection with the Aether. You may even be in the Aether. It's hard to say for sure. We believe that Gersh was an ethereal being and sometimes when you are an ethereal being, you can actually manipulate the world. For example, whoever is in control of the MDP, MTD pyramid is able to actually use their ethereal powers to control the zombies. Dr. Maxis has also been shown to use his ethereal powers to manipulate the world. Gersh didn't have this ability, but he still existed in the ethereal realm. It's really complicated. And it's incredibly difficult to pin down and say, this is the either. You can look at many different religions, you can look at many different cultures across the world, and they all seem to have their own form of the either. And you can ask a million different people what the either is, and you're not going to get a definitive answer. What you really need to know on a fundamental level is that the either is just a thing. And it's everywhere. And while it's not physical, you can attune to it, or you can be a part of it. And when you are a part of it, you have abilities and powers that, while not physical, are definitely powerful and can manipulate the world in many different ways. That's going to wrap things up for this episode of the Zombie Storyline Q&A. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and maybe subscribe. I upload as many Zombie Storyline Q&As as possible, and if you enjoyed this one, I'm sure you'll enjoy the next one. I hope you have a wonderful day, and...